G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the plane that gives you the best dogfights tier for tier in War Thunder and this is the Swedish J21A2. And this plane is probably what I would have described as the jack of all trades and the ace at none. But it does have a few things up its sleeve which makes it an ace at dogfighting and you're going to see that all throughout this video. These planes are, well this family of planes are quite interesting because they're first of all a pusher prop, second of all they're a domestic Swedish fighter, which is, you know, great. It's it's good plane. It makes it interesting. It's not one of the Spitfires, BF-109s, Mustangs, P-47s, one of those types of things. It's got its own little unique flavor to it. And that flavor is its ability to turn. And it's not a sort of turn like the Zeros, but it sort of has that ability to sustain a dogfight and be a really good bleeding energy fighter where you gather your energy, you go up into a climb, you can then use that climb, that energy that you've gotten from the climb to bleed away in dogfights and it is just really, really good at that. And when you when you can bleed speed, it is very, very advantageous. But of course it does come with a caveat and that caveat is you're losing energy when you're bleeding speed because you can sort of categorize your energy as it is into two factors which is your kinetic energy otherwise how fast you're flying and of course your potential energy which is how high you are in terms of your altitude. Now we have first come across our very first whoopsie doopsie here and I've gone headlong into the enemy fighters but that's okay because I'm in the J21A2. The other ace up this plane's sleeve is its weapon system. This plane has a fantastic amount of weapons along its arsenal. It's got 50 cals, it's got 20 mils, and they're all bunched up in the nose, which means that you can concentrate the fire very well. And that's what I'm doing for this P-47. Hopefully I'm gonna strike home. I manage a hit. I'm gonna go for this P-47 in a very, very shady head on. Manage to get the kill. And now I've turned the three versus one into a two versus one. And that's really important. I've got that friendly up there distracting the BF-109. So Technically, it's a 3v2, but this is something that I can definitely win. And a P47, I'm guaranteed to outturn. So I'm going to dispatch him very quickly. And then I'm going to move on to the P51. And notice how I'm going in a split S here. This means that I'm putting my sort of plane in a situation where I'm going to bleed a bit of speed, but then I'm going to go into a vertical and I'm going to use that energy retention of the P51 as, long as, his, as well as his bulkiness to try and get this guy to stall out nice and early, but also to use that to slip in right behind. And it hasn't quite worked to start off, uh, but this is where it starts to get really nice and interesting. The uh, friendly A21A has come through, which leaves the BF-109 square, not square behind my ass, but the P51 is square behind my ass and it is going to be very very difficult to shake him off i can do some good defensive flying in this plane and i'm just managing to evade his guns there 50 caliber machine guns can be quite potent but we're going to go around and then put it straight up into the vertical following the p51 and the p51 really has nowhere to go so it's going to basically be a quick reversal from here as long as i can point the guns and this is pretty much like a three three kills if i can get this guy uh, nice and nice and quick and it looks like I'm just gonna just gonna open up a little bit I'm gonna follow him down the p51 is kind of screwed here because he's blown his energy advantage and that is pretty much all she wrote for him now the b51 the the bf109 is sort of sitting up nice and high uh, I can't really go for him so I'm gonna target the xp50 as my next victim the uh, bf109 has an altitude and an energy advantage over me and I won't really be able to do anything because this plane as good as it is is not a particularly good climber. So I now am in a situation where the BF-109 has an energy advantage against both of us. There's an XP-50 narrowly closing the distance. So I'm going to go for a quick upside down head on, get nothing, go for the re-engage. It looks like the XP-50 hasn't been paying attention. I managed to saw his wing off with the 20 mils. And then I can now focus my attention on the BF-109, but I just don't know where he is. I haven't found him. And it turns out that he's been killed by a friendly, which uh, is an absolute win for me. You can turn these really, really hairy situations into a very easy victory quite quickly in this plane because of just how powerful it is in terms of its ability to d dispatch enemies and its ability to bleed enough speed to force overshoots. Uh, and of course, if you have the altitude advantage, then you can kind of use it as a boom and zoom fighter. Although it just doesn't really have the energy retention. And of course, it doesn't really have the engine power to keep up in a sort of energy dogfight where you really want that acceleration. The J21 is really a mix of fighters where it is sort of partially zero, partially Spitfire, but also, you know, partially P38. 
So you, not only in its looks, of course, but more in its function, where you have that ability to concentrate your fire in the nose. And then, you, of course, you also have those, uh, the, the ability to uh, sort of manipulate the situation, kind of like a Spitfire can. Now, our very last kill here is going to come from this B25. He's very rapidly closing the distance and he's not paying attention to me. He's paying attention to my teammate, which means that I can swoop in. Now I've run out of cannon, but it doesn't matter because the machine guns are ferocious on this plane. I believe they're a special variant of the Browning M2 with uh, maybe Swedish ammunition. Uh, but honestly, these things punch really, really well. And when there are several of them in the nose and the wing roots, it really does make the difference. You can see here just how quickly I am tearing up that B25. And there is a quick and cheeky ace looking very, very schmick over there. Could have been a 6K, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to move on to our next game. And again, I'm not in an advantage here. This J2M can probably outturn me. He can probably outrun me. But I am going to try and force an overshoot so I can turn a disadvantage into an advantage, which is what this plane excels at. Now, He's coming in pretty hot, but I don't think he's going for me at the, the at the present. So it looks like he's trying to escape a friendly. I'm going to go for the pitch. It's not a very uh, well thought maneuver because it is quite risky. Uh, and of course, I don't really have the energy to follow. I don't lead it nearly well enough. I need a little bit more lead there. But I managed to get the snipe with the 20 mils. And that is the absolute ace that you can pull with this plane if you've got nothing else. It's got some really, really strong guns. And these dogfights that it provides having these really quick dispatch times and these really uh, instant abilities to like snap onto your opponent are sort of unparalleled. It's sort of only replicated by a few other planes in the game that just either have a ridiculous amount of AOA or have their engines situated in the mid fuselage, which is the P-63 and likewise. These planes just sort of have a weird ability to have some nose authority at, at speed. It's really crazy to be honest, but it, it just is a nice feeling. It is something that you have to get used to. It is something that you cannot execute at low speeds. And so your very, very last resort will not be to do this. But of course, the ultimate way to win against your opponents is to boom and zoom. And unfortunately for me, I am stuck once again with the lousy climb rate of this plane, which is one of the big things that hampers it. You really need to side climb. You need to get some energy. You need to wait a little bit for your opponents to dive down a little bit lower before engaging lots of opponents like I am here but unfortunately there's no turning back and there is no way that I can really avoid this situation so I'm going to go on with a little head on I've tried very hard to get some shots in here and I'm in a pretty dire situation let's be honest there are two zeros three zeros and a p51 they are all chasing me my team is starting to die and I really don't have many options left and this is the kind of situation that you might find yourself in in the J21 and a lot of the times it doesn't really end well because this plane does not have the ability to run away and then of course to single out targets because the way you win these types of fights is you spread out your targets across a larger area you isolate them you engage them one by one and you beat them and just by winning a bunch of 1v1s by splitting up a 1v4 into four 1v1s you make your odds a lot higher. And I, this is what I'm trying to do here. But a lot of these planes are either keeping up with me or they're giving chase, multiple of them. So I just have to wait until one of them stops paying attention to me. Uh, and then I can maybe engage in that situation. But it's not really looking very promising. As we start to sort of break the five, six kilometer per hour, uh, six kilometer distance mark, I can look at turning around. But I really have to remember that there are three planes here that can very easily exploit an energy advantage against me. This A60 is looking pretty smick. He's looking pretty juicy. So I'm going to test ahead on with this uh, guy. It looks like maybe he's uh, going to come around and I'm going to come up the back, back of him. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just need to sort of deal with as many enemies as I can in a very short period of time. That uh, A6M3 at the very top, uh, sitting at the very top of the stack there, is going to be my biggest threat. And at the end of the day, if I cannot defeat him, I will not be able to defeat the other three. Now, this uh, A6M is the 6C, which is the big fat version. Uh, he's kind of butchering this shot here. I do manage to get a really critical hit on him that uh, opens up something really nasty. So I'm going to go vertical and I'm going to try and exploit the damage that I've done to his body and uh, to his uh, airframe and see if I can get him to pitch up again for me in a last ditch effort. But it looks like it's not really playing the way I want it to. He's kind of heading for the deck. 
and I do need to fight, focus my uh, priorities on other guys. This uh, P51 off to the left of me could be an easy kill, but I don't really want to go for easy kills. I want to go for the kill that is going to give me the victory the best. And I think these zeros are starting to look like it until the P51 turns around and starts to commit for that little wolf pack. So the P51 is now in a distance where I would consider engaging. This Fokker Wolf has pretty much just decided to go for AI and there's nothing I can do to help him. He's now surrounded by three zeros and there is literally nothing he can do. I cannot save him because I will jeopardize my own plane uh, against this P51. And the P51's come in. I'm gonna go for a quick head on, no dice, really shady head on, but I'm gonna go straight for the vertical. I know that the P51, especially at lower speeds, is going to become a real sitting duck. They get really fat below 400 kilometers an hour. And uh, that's to my advantage because this plane gets fat sort of at uh, 250. So I can really exploit that. And again, using my uh, 20 mils, using that absolute arsenal of weaponry, I can really make some damage on that P51D. The uh, A6M0 here is looking pretty juicy as well. I'm starting to get to my overspeed limit, but I have just managed there to stave off the, the wing rip. Uh, and there goes a zero. It's going to be a fairly high value target, that one, because he, if he had a little bit more energy, if he was paying a bit more attention, maybe he could have uh, come away with the victory. But now my attention is to be turned to the A6M up at to uh, top again. He's the guy that's been keeping most of the altitude, most of the energy. Uh, and at the end of the day, this guy is the single biggest threat. Now, of course, I'm not going to tunnel vision him. I need to make sure that I'm preparing for other battles. I need to make sure that I can deal with other threats if they uh, come to me. Uh, and I do have to remember that the more I chase a guy, the more I isolate myself. So I can't really just do this forever because then I'll end up being surrounded by three other guys because they were unspotted. But I'm gaining on this guy pretty well. I'm going to fire a little bit at him. Uh, nothing really strikes. Uh, but at that point, he's heading too close to his airfield. So I'm just going to give it some altitude, give it a little bit of uh, time and see exactly what the A6M does. So we're going to pitch a little bit. It looks like he's going for a climb. Um, and I, I really just want to finish this guy off because he is the absolute highest guy. But as you can see, right below the right boom, the... Uh, enemy airfield is starting to get close by so I do have to be very wary of this and of course the uh, zero is a better climber than I am so I'm just gonna turn away I'm starting to run low on ammunition there is a b25 and a p51 that I can very easily kill and of course that leaves more um, time for my teammates to focus on other opponents of course the a6 uh, m6 has died to the uh, bf 109 g and that leaves three guys left on the enemy team. The B-25 is a non-threat. The P-51 is a minimal threat. And of course, that zero is a high threat, but he's over the enemy airfield. And I'm at 2,000 meters, which means the AA guns are going to light me up. So I basically just have to bide a little bit of time, wait and see what this zero does. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait him low because I know for a fact that my team is going to haul ass over to an easy kill. And that means that I can engage the zero in a three versus one, provided that I don't lose any uh, teammates. And of course that I kill the B25 and the P61. Sorry, that's my mistake. I'm uh, looking at this gameplay on a very, very small screen. So I do uh, make some mistakes identifying aircraft. But uh, regardless, the P61 has a 450 cal turret. The B25 is also trying to light me up uh, and it's pretty difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little cheeky. Uh, I'm gonna back off the throttle a little bit so I don't overspeed. I'm gonna target the P61 and then I'm gonna rapidly switch to the B25 to give him a false sense of security. There goes the B25 and now I get to change myself with the P61. The P61 only has a top turret, it doesn't have a bottom turret, so I need to make sure that I engage it in a dead zone and that's kind of what's happening here. He's just dipped that wing and he's not really engaging me with the turrets. This is where he can engage me with the turrets and I'm just gonna quickly light him up. I get his pilot and that is enough for me, but I have a very little ammunition left. So I have to be very careful and now I'm a sitting duck. So off to my teammates I go and I need to make sure that I can sort of secure myself because also my oil is leaking and this is going to provide a sort of increasing threat as the battle drags on. This Spitfire is coming in, there's a P-47. It is pretty much now a three versus one. And if that BF-109 decides to get off his ass and join as well, we could very easily overwhelm the uh, A6M here, provided that he doesn't play very, very selectively and boom and zoom, um, which he's sort of kind of been doing all game. But at the end of the day, I just have to trust my teammates will sort of engage that properly. Now, 
the uh, J21 is an excellent plane for sort of dogfights and this sort of thing. But it is, like I've said, terrible for uh, the, the really heavy boom and zoom maneuvers. Now, the A6M is diving in on the uh, friendly planes there, and this means that he's going to bleed a lot of energy. This kind of brings him a little bit more on my level. I am doing a fairly decent speed, and the A6M is boom and zooming the Spitfire here, which means that the Spitfire is pretty much fucked, because there is nothing you can do if you're being dived on by a uh, Zero, and you are not able to deal with the crazy sort of energy dogfighting that you can do against the A6M. Now, I have critically hit him, and I've pretty, I'm pretty confident that I critically hit him in the engine, which is why he bailed. And that is a very, very nice game to demonstrate the abilities of the J21A2. Six kills is fairly remarkable. And so we come across onto our final match of the day. There is a P8, and of course, you know what is going to happen with this absolute arsenal of weaponry on the front of this plane. Nothing really surprising there because that wing just goes clean off. And I do now have an energy advantage over all the enemy planes that I can see. And this is pretty much the ideal situation. What you want to do in props is maintain an energy advantage like this. And the altitude advantage is your easiest way to do that. The other easiest way to do that is speed. And you can kind of see that play out in jets where you have the faster planes zooming around the battlefield and being basically untouchable provided that they don't get a missile in the wrong places. But that's beside the point. We are now going to try and save a friendly here by going for a little dive, but it's it's just not going to work. I just can't get there in time. But it's okay because the Yak decides to commit seppuku instead. The uh, enemy Yak down below is also looking like a very juicy target, and I could very potentially uh, engage this guy with uh, ease. He's looking like he's not really paying attention. And so I'm just going to come in... Go for a quick blast. My aim is fucking terrible, but I managed to get a critical hit, and that's pretty much good enough for me for now. I'm going to go into a vertical, and you can see, sort of, this is a very aggressive boom and zoom, but I am bleeding a lot of energy. And whilst, like, this is a pretty poor situation for a boom and zoom, if you were in an energy dogfight, or if you were fighting somebody that just couldn't maintain that altitude with you, or on the converse, you needed to make overshoot, this is a plane that can really do that. And now, what I've done is I've thrown away my altitude advantage by engaging this Yak-9 and failing to recognize the Yak-3. And of course, there's another Yak-3 harass harassing a Corsair down below. So now I'm a little bit stuck. This is going to be quite difficult. I'm going to go for a quick burst here on the Yak-3. Nothing because the Yak-3 moves out of the way. But the Yak-3, again, plays into my guns. I get a critical hit. And this is the ability that I'm talking about, where you've got that ability to kind of just snap onto your opponents. That nose authority is really, really important. And you can see the ability of that nose authority. Again, right here, I'm getting some hits. I'm probably going to make short work of this yak. In There we go. Uh, I run out of cannon ammo, but you know what? That's okay. I can, I can deal with that. The machine guns are plenty potent. You saw what they did to the B-25. You saw what they did to the P-61. You saw what they did to the Zero. And of course... A Russian plane is a little bit more squishy than the American planes, so those 50 cals will tear them up. Um, it's a it's a really nice phenomenon of these cannons. They just and the and the machine guns. They just tend to work, and they just tend to be really really strong. Like there's nothing really that I've I've encountered at this caliber that is quite as potent as the Swedish 50 cals. And even 20 mils get a run for their money with these. Uh, Swedish 50 cals. I, I reckon they'd be better than Schwax. I reckon they're better than the uh, Japanese cannons. I honestly think that these are probably the best gun per caliber in the uh, in the game. And so having these nose mounted again on a plane that is fairly good with its nose authority means that it is extremely deadly. At one point this plane was considered one of the most overpowered planes of the game and I disagree a little bit because I found that its performance was quite lacking. And if you had a performance advantage over this plane, you could very, very easily exploit that. But of course, the average player doesn't really have the experience to exploit such flaws, like the low climb rate, the poor nose, nose authority below that 250 km per hour mark, uh, and of course, the energy retention and the, the, uh, the turn rate. If you're flying something like a Spitfire or a Zero, uh, you can bleed this guy in, the J in a J21 down to a lower speed and um, ultimately exploit that to get a very, very easy kill. You can get stall kills very easily, uh, rope dopes very easily, and you have to be careful of someone trying the same thing in the J21A2. 
uh, or, or someone trying it against you rather. So just m realize that this plane is not an unkillable force. It's something that you can just uh, over energy. You can just sort of, uh, as long as it doesn't have about 400 kilometers per hour of airspeed and three or 4,000 meters, you can very easily work against this plane. You just can't really take too many hits. The guns are really, really strong. And of course, it doesn't really give you that much of a chance. But at the same time, this plane is just a squishy and you can exploit the weaknesses just as you can exploit the weaknesses of a zero by boom and zooming. And so this is something that likewise, I, I will always recommend. I just genuinely think that that is the best way to do things. And of course, by playing patiently, you can make this plane really, really strong. And that's exactly what I've done. I've had a fairly good run in this plane, and uh, I believe some of the other planes, I think it might have been um, the J21A1, I managed to get a ridiculously high kill-death ratio in. But it's no time to talk about uh, KDs. It's time to dogfight this Yak. And again, we're going to see exactly what we can do against the might of a Yak-3. Of course, Russian planes tend to perform very well at low altitudes. That's what they were designed for. So we're going to engage a Russian plane exactly where they were uh, sort of best for. And it's working. It's working because we're able to bleed energy and we're able to keep right behind this Russian guy. And this uh, Yak-3 really doesn't stand a chance. We're popping flaps, we're doing things like that. And again, we get ourselves a very nice, easy kill. The Russians are very good plane. Like the Russian planes are good, don't get me wrong, but they're not invincible. In fact, I don't really find many planes at this tier that are invincible, apart from maybe the XP-50. Um, maybe I could make another video on that, but most of these planes have a fair strategy that you can utilize against them, and the J-21 and the Yak-3 are no exceptions. That being said, I still think this plane is the absolute go-to when it comes to excellent dogfights, when it comes to the sort of brown pants moments that you can just miraculously come away from. It kind of reminds me of the old G91 before the 8.7 got infested with uh, A10s and other premiums and supersonics, where you could sort of dogfight and you could find a way just to do things and just to make it work. And that is probably the most rewarding thing in the entire game. It's better than missiles, it's better than radars, it's better than flying at above the speed of sound, and it's better than flying at 12,000 meters in a plane that is still in service. The J-21 is easily some of the most fun that you will have in War Thunder, and of course it's very easy to grind. It's not that high in its, in its tier, and you can always have some really, really good fun with the baby versions of this, the, the ones that are at a lower BR. Um, honestly, I just see a lot of winning in this plane. And of course, it's not invincible. I've had plenty of matches where I get zero kills in this thing, uh, but I've also had heaps of matches where I get aces and above. And these are just some of them. I've got a couple of others that I could have shown, but I think we're very rapidly running out of time. I just want to make sure that this last guy goes down and that will be it. Of course, it happens. The guy probably crashed on the airfield, giving me the kill. But at the end of the day, we have ourselves another ace. And these are easy aces to get. Of course, if you're not much of a good player, just be patient, and you can really make planes like these shine. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.